The summer before senior year of high school, I spent six weeks doing cancer research. Hey there, my name's Rishabh. I'm a student at Harvard studying neuroscience. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can optimize your summer to not only have fun, but showcase your passions to top colleges. This video is part five of my science research course. If you haven't watched videos one through four yet, go watch the playlist. The link is in the description below. Research was my number one activity, and it's what got me into Harvard, Stanford, and MIT. In my last video, I talked about how you can reach out to professors to get a research opportunity in their lab. But in this video, I want to focus more on how you can get into summer research programs. There are some summer research programs that are crazy competitive. According to Forbes, the Research Science Institute, or RSI for short, had an acceptance rate of around 2 to 3%. When I did RSI, I was blown away by my fellow peers, and I made some close friends who are now my closest friends at Harvard. But I'm sure you're wondering, one, how do you find out about these programs in the first place? And two, how can you best position yourself to actually get into these programs, especially the most competitive ones? Part one, how to find the best programs possible. If you've ever wondered how your friends are interning at NASA or MIT, this is how. But luckily, the strategy to finding these programs and figuring out which ones are the best is actually the easiest part because I've already done it for you. On my new website, rishabacademy.com, head to the free resources tab and then Rishab STEM student guide. Press free download, put in your email and then click on the product. On this list, I've manually curated 50 research programs that you can apply to. These are the best ones possible, whether you're a domestic student or an international student, if you're a middle schooler or high schooler, if you're looking to do math research, chemistry research, bio research, or even economics or social studies research, this list has best programs for you. In this guide, I've also listed their requirements and given you extra advice on how to apply. But speaking of advice, this is part two. How do you actually get into these programs? How can you get an edge over other applicants so that you're accepted? Here are four main things that you need to keep in mind when applying to these programs. Number one is that these are research programs at the end of the day. And so they're looking for people who have an aptitude for doing research. Even if you haven't had past research experiences yet, which are of course the best way to showcase your aptitude for doing research, there are other ways to showcase that. Taking college level courses or AP level classes, performing really well on standardized tests, and doing other sorts of STEM passions such as robotics or coding apps in your free time. Two, you want to showcase your dedication and motivation for doing research. Now, this is beyond just awards or to compete at science fairs. Actually show that you're a dedicated student that goes through research not because it's easy, but because it's hard. I want you to talk about you know, a complex problem you've encountered or some roadblock that you weren't able to solve and show the thrill that you get out of doing science research. Speaking of that thrill, you should really show your passion. That's point number three. This is easier said than done. However, showcasing your passion on these applications is absolutely crucial, and this looks different for everyone. So I'm not gonna give you some formula for showcasing your passion. Just be yourself and be genuine. And point four here is to emphasize your curiosity. As a researcher, one of the core things is being able to ask questions and being motivated to answer those questions. And so showcasing your curiosity for the world around you, whether that's just simple things to, you know, your actual disciplines and fields you're interested in is absolutely essential. Now, you probably already knew most of that. And so at this point, I want to get into actual application advice for you. The first piece of advice I have for you is to start early, even if the deadline is a year or two away for you, especially if you're an underclassman. I was fortunate enough to find out about the Research Science Institute or RSI back when I was a sophomore in high school. And so I had about a year to actually prepare for that. That meant brainstorming, who am I gonna ask for recommendation letters? Or what are the activities I can participate in to show my aptitude for research? Honestly, for me, the activities that were the most fun and the ones that I enjoyed the most, like you know, doing STEM competitions like Science Bowl, the science fairs, as well as just doing research, both independent and in the lab, those were activities that looked good on the RSI application anyway. So for me, I didn't really have to change anything that I was doing in that regard. But just knowing kind of what you're gonna talk about 
kind of helps you process that in the background throughout. Now let's talk about writing the application itself. In my opinion, the most important part is kind of your personal statement. And on some summer research program applications, they're gonna phrase this in something like, what are your primary goals for this program? Or what do you wanna get out of this experience? Or for some others, what are the main research questions you're interested in? Because that is kind of a personal statement that you're giving. Now, I have a big key advice for you here, which is not to list your accomplishments, but rather tell a story around them. And by accomplishments, I mean your goal is to showcase your scientific aptitude and showcase creativity and curiosity, as I mentioned earlier. But how do you actually do that without simply saying, I am curious, you know, I really enjoy solving these problems. Oh, and for this problem, I went on to win the International Science and Engineering Fair. Don't just list out accomplishments like that. You wanna tell a story around it. This year, a ton of people asked me for help with their RSI applications, and the number one thing I noticed was that there was just too much name dropping of awards and just simply kind of listing those things out. Telling a story is a much more effective way of showing, not telling. Along the way, you do wanna show that you are capable, but you don't have to just say that I'm really good at math or I won this award in math because of my passion for it. You wanna show your passion for it. So describe some scene or some specific problem and talk through it. I personally talked about an experience in a museum, as well as I think I told another story about a book I read. These tied into my greater message around science. And of course I was able to showcase my accomplishments and my aptitude, but it was by telling a story, not necessarily just listing it out. Now, another tip is to tailor your application to the specific program that you're applying to. And because every program is different, they're looking for different things. For instance, if the program you're applying to has a huge residential part, meaning that there's a lot of social activities, a lot of events, a lot of lectures, a lot of teamwork and collaboration, then they're looking for people who can communicate effectively and work with other people. Even at programs like RSI, in my case, while you are doing research by yourself in a lab, not with directly you know, another student at RSI, it would make sense for RSI to still want students who can communicate effectively and enjoy the experience with their other students. Because at the end of the day, the program actually had a kind of a counseling system and it was a camp of sorts where students were paired in different groups and went through different activities and fun challenges together. So even though the actual research may not be as a group, the program may be still looking for students that can participate in groups. So make sure to highlight any leadership, teamwork, and communication skills that you've acquired in your essays. Now, make sure you also practice and prepare for any interviews you might have. And please don't just go on Google and search for top interview questions for blank 2024, because that list is gonna be extremely wrong, right? You wanna come up with questions tailored to yourself as an applicant. They might ask you a super random question, like what's your favorite TV show and how does this relate to science, right? So searching up questions online isn't gonna help. Instead, you should stay genuine and think about who you are as a person. You should reread your application and think of the person that you're trying to convey you are. That means talk about your curiosity, talk about your motivation for doing research. Keep practicing explaining your passion for research in the most concise and compelling way. And finally, even if you don't get into these programs, don't be discouraged. There are still plenty of opportunities. And again, in my last video, I talk about how you can get a research internship at a local lab. That's an excellent backup. And that's something that I had as my plan B. With that, be sure you subscribe so you're notified for when the next video in the research playlist drops and make sure to join the Discord server in the description below to meet like-minded students and work on projects together. That being said, I'll see you in the next video.